Today we're going to take the 2024 Indian Challenger Dark Horse and compare that to the 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. I'm going to talk about everything on these bikes from the aesthetics to the way they ride, suspension, features, pricing, and which one I like the best and why. I'm also going to tell you which one of these bikes I actually ended up buying, uh, and so that will further solidify the bike that I like the most. Uh, but just keep in mind that I'm going to give you as unbiased of an opinion as I possibly can, because even though I love Harley-Davidson and I love the brand, I also think the Challenger is the best motorcycle that Indian makes, hands down. And so this is going to be a very interesting comparison. I hope that you guys enjoy it. And of course, if you like what I do, consider subscribing. You could also join us on Patreon or join the channel right here, however you want to support us or join the community. Love to have you. Let's go and get into it. Now, the first thing I want to do is thank American Biker for letting me come out and compare these two motorcycles side by side and giving you my unbiased opinion. Of course, Indian has nothing to do with this review. This is simply my opinion, but having access to the motorcycles is huge. And so again, I really appreciate American Biker. If you need anything, talk to Rob up there. I'll leave his email down below and then you can shoot him an email or call him and say, hey, Hegshot sent me to you. And so there you go. Uh, really good people up there. They've always done me really well. And so they will treat you well as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now let's go ahead and talk about the aesthetics because this is a huge part of motorcycling and it's a huge part of why we have such a deep connection to our bikes. It's not the only thing that's important, but it's a big part of it. Now Indian hasn't really changed a whole lot this year and although I would have loved to have seen something new from them, uh, at the same time they still have a really good looking motorcycle. Now their fairing is a fixed fairing as well. You have more of a bubble type appearance. That's kind of the only way I really know to describe it. So the older Rogue Glides, of course, they had what appeared to be a much bigger looking fairing. They've slimmed that down or because of the contours that they've added into the fairing, it appears to be smaller and it definitely looks smaller compared to the Challenger this year. The Challenger has that singular Cyclops headlight and then the two little squiggly uh, turn signals on either side of that light and they work as running lights as well. Uh, that's just one of the biggest things that I notice is the, the bigger bubble appearance of the fixed fairing on the Indian. Then of course you have the motorized windshield. So that's gonna allow you to you know, move that up and down, set it where you want, depending upon the weather conditions, whatever. Um, of course it adds some uh, complications to the fairing as far as the motor and it's gotta be a little bit bigger, but having that option is pretty cool. We have a redesigned uh, windshield on the Road Glide now, a little bit sleeker, pretty much all the way around. You'll notice the reduction in the fender this year on the Road Glide as well. Again, they're going more of a performance touring motorcycle compared to what Indian has been doing for a number of years now, which is the stretch bagger scene or the, the, the slammed bagger scene. And while I still think stretch saddlebags and slammed motorcycles still look really good, performance uh, baggers are kind of what's in now. And so Harley kind of beat them to the punch as far as changing up that whole design, but the Indian still looks really freaking good. Of course, it has a bigger fender, more of a full fender, and then you have the, uh, the war bonnet uh, that lights up on the front of the fender. Dual disc Brembo brakes on the Indian, Brembo branded, and then Harley branded Brembo brakes on the front of the Road Glide. You have inverted front forks on the Indian. You do not get that on the Road Glide. Now, Harley went through and they retuned the front and rear suspension to accommodate the weight reduction, which we'll talk about here in a minute, on the new Road and Street Glide. And they've added an inch of travel in the rear. It's 50% increase of travel in the rear now. And so that will come up obviously when we talk about the way they ride. Um, and so while I do appreciate the inverted front forks on the Indian, Harley actually redesigned theirs as well. Coming to the tank. Harley Davidson has a teardrop style tank, 
But again, they've added contoured lines in there, so it gives it a little bit different appearance. The console is much different now than what it's been. Uh, you have the gas cap lid that you just kind of pull up and it's now all integrated. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your gas cap falling off and all that kind of stuff or rolling off the bike when you go to fill up. And while it's interesting, you look at these two bikes, they're both six gallon tanks. The Indian has the appearance of being much bigger. It too has contour lines, uh, but they kind of squared it off in certain areas. Uh, so both of these bikes, you know, from the cockpit uh, look very different as far as the tank and the side appearance of them. But again, they're both six gallons. Saddlebags, again, they're not stretch saddlebags on the Indian, but they are lowered. They're super close to the pipe, again, given that slammed appearance. Um, and then also the side covers. So obviously Harley uses side covers as well. And in order to make those appear smaller, what they did is they blacked out the bottom of the side covers, Harley did. Um, so it, it looks smaller, right? And that whole area from the motor to the radiator, on back on the Harley is much more open. It breathes a little bit. On the Indian, they have plastic there that covers all of that. You could look at that two ways. You could say, okay, well, the Indian's easier to keep clean. You know, you don't have to reach in there and all that kind of stuff. Or you could say it looks a little bit cluttered. I tend to err on the side of it looks too cluttered. I wish they would kind of clean that area up, get some of that plastic out of there and just let the, the motor breathe a little bit. And not only the motor, right up under, you know, where, where you're sitting, the rider, I would just like all of that to be opened up just a little bit. Now, the bags on the Rogue Glide, although they may appear smaller at first glance, they're actually bigger this year. So they've actually widened them. Again, you have some contoured lines in there, uh, but they've also widened those bags and they sit up over the pipes, of course, giving us that performance bagger look. Now, what about what we see and what we interact with as a rider? And so that's going to take me into seating position and the electronics, the gauges and all of that. So simply put, Harley Davidson upgraded this entire system. It's now the Skyline OS. You have a 12.3 inch screen. Everything is integrated into that screen, giving us a much more open area in the cockpit. No more cluster that covers the handlebars. If you need to get to your risers, the bolts are right there. It's, it's a lot more open in that area. Tachometer, speedometer, all of your widgets, your trip A's, your trip B's, your engine coolant temperature, your, your tire pressure sensors. Holy crap, they actually have them on Harley now. All of that stuff is in there. And so you're gonna get three different appearances dependent upon the mode that you're in. So touring, road, or sport mode, there's gonna have a little bit different layout. I cover all that stuff in the individual review of the, of the road and street glide as well. So if you wanna look at all that stuff, you absolutely can. Now on the Indian, of course, we still have the seven inch ride command system. So this is a mixture of a touchscreen and the physical gauges that you're going to get as well. This is kind of how the Road Glide was for a number of years, almost 10 years at that. Um, looks a little bit busier now when you compare that to the Road Glide. So this is going to come down to personal preference. Do you like the physical gauges along with the capabilities of the screen? And of course, in the screen, um, in the Challenger, you can look at all of those parameters, the TPMS, engine temperature and you know of course you have your navigation in there now that is a subscription based thing for the ride command but they give you the first year for free through indian so that's going to give you updates on you know live weather updates traffic updates um, and maps and all of that kind of stuff harley they have maps now on the bike but you have to pay 350 dollars for that that covers you for three years as far as updates for maps you know, live weather updates and traffic updates. Um, of course, the navigation will be there for as long as you own the bike, but you get three years of updated service with that $350 surcharge. If you have an iPhone though, with CarPlay, then you can skip that charge altogether. So they really made this for somebody that maybe, I don't know, maybe if your phone dies, then you can keep that integrated maps. Maybe you have an Android Auto, which Android Auto dropped their support for motorcycles. So if you have an Android Auto or you have an Android, you can still have the option to buy those maps. 
Not everybody needs it, so they wanted to cut costs where they could, and that's one of the ways they did it. Now keep in mind with CarPlay, Apple CarPlay, you have to have a headset with a mic. And so what I did recently is I actually hooked up with Cardo, uh, which was absolutely perfect timing uh, to be able to get this thing to work. And so I don't like having things that are sticking in my ear. So you could, you could use a Apple AirPods or whatever, uh, but I just, I hate that. So what I did is I got one of the Cardos, they sent it to me, the Pack Talk Edge, fantastic unit. They're discounted through my channel. I'll leave a link down below. So if you need a good Bluetooth headset, communicate with you and your wife, communicate with people in your group, and be able to use CarPlay, uh, I'll leave a link to Cardo down below. And make sure you use that discount code to save yourself quite a bit of money. Supports my channel as well. This is a fantastic unit, though. So just throwing that out there. A little, little shameless plug, but it helps you guys as well. So a little bit different approach there. Indian's going to give you one year for free. Harley, you got to pay for it if you want it, uh, but then again, you can use CarPlay at the same time. Seating position. So I have always seen the Challenger and the Rogue Glide is kind of one and the same uh, for the older models, Rogue Glide, and the previous model and this model, Challenger. They feel really comfortable if you just ride around town. You know, the bars are kind of down here, so your shoulders are, you know, kind of pointed downwards. But then when you get it on a longer ride, that's where I really started to see the imperfection with those bars hurting in between my shoulder blades and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this year is a little bit different. While the Challenger basically is the same, the Rogue Glide, they've put a set of bars on here that are much taller. They, they fit perfectly in line with my shoulders. You, can, you have about 27 degrees of angle there that you can move the bars back and forth. To me, the Rogue Glide is actually much more comfortable seating position straight from the factory this year than it is on the Challenger. Now, of course, these things can be fixed with a handlebar upgrade, so it's not a permanent thing, but from the factory, I believe Harley did a better job this year of setting up those bars straight from the factory. You may not even need to buy a set of bars for the Harley, which is kind of crazy to, to, to say, but it's true. Of course, we have the motorized windshield on the Indian. We kind of already talked about that. We now have a lever on the uh, Harley instead of the push button that would always stick and then they got rid of the push button and now it's a lever so you can open and close that. You also have a couple of little, uh, I forget what Harley actually calls them, but they're little levers on the, on the inside of the fairing closest to the rider so you can open and close those as needed as well. My buddy M Swedes told me too, the little vents that are on either side of the headlight on the Rogue Glide are still big enough where you can fit an Insta360 through there, uh, but only if you have the protective covers off. So uh, I keep the protective covers on because I ruined a Insta uh, after having a, for about a month uh, because I didn't have covers on, on the freaking uh, cameras. So anyways, you can still fit those through the, uh, the Rogue Glide. And of course, the headlight on the Rogue Glide. I don't even know if I talked about this. If I missed this, I apologize. But basically, you have a single headlight now with a W LED that's underneath it. It almost looks like it's two headlights, but it is still just the one. So we've covered a lot so far, but what about some of the other specs and some of the differentiating features between these two motorcycles? Well, when we look at the Indian, you're 840 pounds up and running. On Harley, they've actually shaved, I think it's 16 pounds off of the Rogue Glide, 19 off of the Street Glide. So we're at 838 pounds in running order now for the Rogue Glide. So when we look at the seats laden, we're at 26.5 inches on the Challenger, we're at 26.6 on the Rogue Glide. Um, either way, it's still going to, you know, it's about the same for me. I'm 5'7", uh, so I'll be able to reach the ground, but I only really have an issue when I need to back the motorcycle up. So I always invest into a reach seat of some kind and both Harley and Indian both make these. Uh, so that way I can get just a little bit closer to the ground and it puts you a little closer to the bars as well. Now both bikes have all of the safety features now. So Harley has simplified this whole thing. Road glide, street glide. You can buy your parts packages. You can make your regular road glide into more of an ST. You can make it into a day tripper, a long hauler, all different kinds of packages. And I'm going to leave a link down below. If you buy from Harley Davidson, 
you can use my link. It doesn't cost you anything extra and I get a little kickback and you can support the channel. Uh, this is a very new link. And so I'll make sure I set it up down below. You input your bike information and boom, you can shop for whatever you normally do just through my link. So it's pretty cool. But they now have packages through Harley Davidson, um, but they've simplified the buying process. So you have the Road Glide, Street Glide, and you can go with black or chrome pipes. Obviously, black is going to add $1,300 onto it. If you add one of the colors now through Harley, it's $850 bucks across the board. That includes Vivid Black. Billiard Gray is now the standard color on Harley. So there's no, no further upcharge for Billiard Gray, but there is for Vivid Black. And then, of course, Black Pipes is going to be a little bit more, too. On the Indian, you have a number of different color options. And, of course, the Dark Horse comes all blacked out. And you can actually get it with the new power band audio. This is going to have, of course, your upgraded uh, speakers in the fairings and your fairings in the bag. And it's going to give you a nine band equalizer. I believe this thing only goes up to like level, I want to say it's 12, 13, 14, something like that. But I'm telling you, there's intervals. So if you go f level five, you know, you might have three different levels of level five until you get to six. I'm not quite sure why they did it like that, but regardless, the sound system on the power band audio is crazy good. I mean, for a stock audio system, it's incredible. So if you're not trying to run Bluetooth in your helmet um, and you, you want all the sound you can get out of the motorcycle at no matter at what speed, uh, this is an incredible upgrade that you can get on the Challenger Dark Horse. On the Harley, of course, you know, the regular Road Glide, you can get audio packages, but straight from the factory, you get the two fairing speakers and that's it. And once you get over 60, 65 miles an hour, I mean, I, I can't, I can't really hear the thing at all. Um, so maybe it's just my hearing, but the, the audio is pretty much worthless once you get to highway speeds on the Road Glide. Again, I have the Cardo now, I listen to it in my helmet, and until I can get back into volunteer audio and really upgrade this thing, that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, so it's definitely not as good as the power band audio, but the power band audio is not free either. Um, and so I'll get to pricing here in a minute, but regardless, they, they, you, know, you have a big difference there. They both come now with TPMS, uh, hill hole control, drag torque, cornering ABS, cornering drag torque, all of this stuff is included on both motorcycles. This is a fantastic move. This is something that Indian has been doing for a number of years now, along with some other things, including the ability to quickly arm, lock, unlock your motorcycle with the key fob, motorized windshield. You know, these electronics and stuff and life-saving features they've incorporated on their bikes for a number of years, as long as you went with the dark horse and above. Harley is now getting around to this this year, which is just such a great move. These are, these are life-saving things. And anybody that says, oh yeah, the bike will just correct itself for you, um, honest to God, I don't think they know what they're talking about because you still need to have technique. You still need to practice. But at the same time, if you find yourself in a bad situation, the bike is going to assist you in staying upright and that's what it's all about, man. Rider aids are fantastic. It's not a replacement for training, but if things just get out of hand, that's what they're there for. And I'm so glad that both bikes have that. So all of that stuff is included. And then of course, Harley, uh, even on the CVO Road Glide ST, which is their like ultimate performance bagger, uh, that one even doesn't have the quick unlock uh, and lock, which is kind of crazy. I think that's the only CVO that doesn't have that feature, at least over the past decade. But regardless, man, that is, uh, that's one area that Indian still has. And that's a feature that, you know, I really would love to have on my motorcycle. The motorized windshield, I could live without it. I mean, how often am I really gonna be changing that thing? Probably not that much. But locking and unlocking the bike, I do this all the time. So anyways, um, you get that included with the Challenger. We also get the single Fox um, adjustable shock on the Indian, and then we have the dual emulsion shocks on the Harley. And so 
Um, they've changed it up a little bit this year. And so while they're not hydraulically adjustable or anything like that on the Harley, you can now adjust preload uh, for both sides. So essentially on the right side saddlebag, that's gonna allow you to uh, you know, take your wrench out, adjust your preload as needed for the total weight of you, your passenger, all of that stuff and kind of get it set there. And then on the left-hand side, you have the quick adjustable knob, which will allow you to kind of fine tune that with uh, additional luggage. Or let's say you ride with a passenger sometimes, you can actually run that thing to max and that will give you a little bit more preload there in the suspension. And again, we have an extra inch of travel. And so that's gonna lead me perfectly into the way these two motorcycles ride. Now, one thing I have praised Indian for over the past, I don't know, four years since I started this channel, essentially, uh, is how well balanced the Indians really are, especially the Challenger. They feel very light coming off the kickstand. They are super nimble going into the corners and nothing's really changed this year uh, because they haven't changed anything with them. They're still super nimble. You have the inverted front suspension. And while admittedly I haven't run these things for a long period of time, I haven't taken them up to the mountains or anything like that, I'd love to, but I haven't, uh, still from what I've seen in my experience being on a lot of different challengers and riding them quite a bit is that these things handle the corners really well and they're super comfortable. The suspension and the way the, uh, the Indian rides is really good. The suspension on the Road Glide is the best it's ever been stock anyways. They have retuned this to where, you know, if you've ridden any Harley bagger, that goes for the street and the Road Glide with stock suspension in the past, you know that when you hit a bump, especially on the specials, by the way, which were an inch lower, uh, it really sucked. I mean, you would bottom out quickly uh, and it was just super uncomfortable. You'd feel almost every little bump and imperfection in the road. Um, and, you know, they've pretty much made Wilbur's uh, a necessity for upgrading in shocks. That's still something I want to uh, try eventually is a Wilbur's suspension setup because I've heard so many great things. Or even the Screaming Eagle Olean's shocks. You know, they've made those upgrades like, almost a necessity through Harley Davidson, but I think people may actually be surprised as to how good this new suspension being tuned and having an extra inch of travel along with additional preload settings actually is. Makes a huge difference here. So I'm really glad to see Harley paid attention to that and they have done a, uh, a really fantastic job. Would it be nice to have inverted front forks on, on the front of the Harley? Yes, you're gonna get that on the CVO Rogue Glide ST. You don't get that here. It does make a difference. The, the CVO Rogue Glide ST is just a whole nother animal. While the regular Rogue Glide rides good, the CVO Rogue Glide ST rides even better. But anyways, I, I really appreciate what Harley has done this year with the new suspension setup. And you have a super nimble feeling bike. Like I said, they've shaved you know, 16 pounds off of this motorcycle and you can really tell. Now, some people may say, oh, 16 pounds, that's nothing. That's actually pretty impressive considering we're talking about heavyweight motorcycles anyways. And they haven't done that by cheaping out and using a bunch of cheap plastics and stuff. They've actually done that by using lighter gauge steel on the tank. They are using different plastics in the uh, saddlebags but they actually have higher strength in them as well. Uh, so if you're putting speakers in your bags or whatever, uh, they actually can handle more of a load and they're lighter. So kind of the best of both worlds. They've done work in the triple tree to reduce weight as well. So there's a number of things they've done there and it really shows in the new motorcycles. They feel a heck of a lot more nimble than what they did before. And that's one area that the Challenger really excelled in. But now I feel like both bikes are kind of even. When you get them up on the highway, which one cuts through the wind better? Well, that's really hard to say, man. They both cut through the wind really just incredibly well. Now, of course, on the Indian, you may get a little bit more head buffeting. If you have that windshield pulled all the way down or you know set all the way down, you might get a little less if you have it all the way up. Um, so you have, you do have that option, but both bikes, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, dude, 80, 85 miles an hour, they cut through the wind incredibly well. And I don't have an issue with either one of them. To me, the road glide still is the king on 
long road trips because you get less buffeting, you get a lighter feeling front end because you're not, you know, turning the fairing every time you do anything with the front end of the motorcycle. Both bikes just do an incredible job. I mean, honestly, you could give me either one stock as far as uh, the, the fairing and the suspension and all of that kind of stuff, and I'd be okay. I think the biggest difference this year, honestly, is just the handlebar setup on the Road Glide is so much more comfortable. And I think you'll find that after you spend some time on the Road Glide on a long distance trip, um, or even if you do that on a Challenger, you'll find out quickly that you really need to change the bars on the Challenger. Now I do say that without having ridden the Challenger for a super long distance, but I found this out on my 2020 Road Glide when I went for a long road trip. Again, bars were a necessity after that road trip. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's the same case with the Indian because they sit down lower like the older Road Glides. And then that brings us to the motors. And so we have kind of closed the gap this year, Harley has, um, as far as closing in on that Power Plus engine from Indian. I mean, the Power Plus, you can say what you want about it. You can call it ugly. You can say, oh, it doesn't look good, whatever. But I'm telling you, this is one of the best engines in any bagger, period. It's liquid cooled um, and it does run a, a little bit cooler than a lot of the air cooled engines from Harley, but, or even the Thunderstroke from Indian. But this motor is just a ton of fun. You have 122 horsepower and 128 or 129 foot pounds of torque. Uh, it is not only super torquey, but I feel like all the way through the rev range on the Indian, you get power delivery, good power delivery pretty much anywhere. It is still an awesome engine. Would I like to see upgrades? Yes, but it is still just a monster. But Harley came out with the 117 this year. So they've redesigned a number of different things to not only give it more power and torque than the previous 117s, but also to make sure that it's running cooler and getting more performance out of it at the same time. So they have a new intake track. So we're getting not only more air into the motor, but we're getting cleaner air too, less restrictive air. We have a new cylinder head design as well. And we have a new cooling system for the cylinder heads. So it's a mixture of liquid cooled heads and an air cooled engine. So you have the kind of the best of both worlds, if you will. So you keep the front end of the bike looking super clean. You have a small radiator down at the bottom. You can upgrade that chin spoiler if you want to. There's a, a whiskey fire one that looks really cool uh, to replace the black. And I'm sure they'll come out with more colors later, but that's all you really have there. On the Indian, of course, you have a, a much bigger radiator because it's fully liquid cooled. But after talking to the engineers at Harley, why they didn't go with a liquid cooled engine just all the way around is they said they were able to get such good performance and numbers out of the motorcycle and still keep that iconic sound and look of what Harley Davidson uh, customers are expecting and still be able to bump up those numbers and get us a better motor. And I think they achieved that. Now you have 130 foot pounds of torque out of the Harley and 105 horsepower, but we also have a lighter motorcycle this year too, making it feel much more nimble. And you have the addition of ride modes. So Indian, this is nothing new to you guys. You've had ride modes for a long time. I've praised Indian for that. Now Harley has finally caught up. So road, sport, rain, and a custom mode. It's gonna allow you to adjust a number of different things from you know engine braking to ABS and drag torque control, all that kind of stuff that you can adjust in your custom mode. And in sport mode, it really wakes up the motorcycle just like you would expect. And it just makes it a lot more fun. And then when you get into a bad rainstorm, you put that thing in rain mode, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, kind of increase the bike's traction and it's going to decrease the sensitivity in the throttle, uh, making you feel a little bit more comfortable in the rain at the same time. So both bikes now have that. Um, engine wise, I have yet to really see how good the new cooling system is. I kind of mentioned this, but basically they have the liquid cooled heads, but the coolant actually is routed to the rear cylinder first, which is where we feel the most heat and then to the front cylinder. So we should be getting, Harley says like a 40 or 50% uh, 
decrease in the amount of heat that we feel as the rider and the passenger. One other thing that Harley did this year, by the way, is they obviously changed the rear end of the motorcycle. Um, and if you think that I'm just like skipping some of this stuff or whatever, I talk about, I've talked about this at length in some of my full reviews of the road and the street glide. So if you feel like I've missed anything here, it's all in those. You know, I didn't want to focus so much on the new changes with the road glide. I wanted to focus more on the biggest changes and the biggest differences between the two motorcycles. But with that being said, Harley did change the rear end of the bike now. So you have the two LED strips that have replaced the bullet style turn signals that have been there for a long time. Or even like the Zeppelin lights that are on like the Ultras and the Road Glide Limited. Of course, you have your turn signals in the front of the fairing, that W-shaped light that's going to work as your turn signal. So having LEDs all the way around, I have nothing more to complain about with Harley. I made a joke for a number of years saying that Harley, I knew Harley had, you know, just this huge warehouse of halogen bulbs and they would not, not put them on the bikes, on new bikes, until they ran out of those halogen bulbs. And either they ran out or they said, man, I'm so sick of headshot complaining about this thing and <laughs> finally changed it. I don't know. But the rear end, it looks kind of like a CVO now. So it, it, it's got a really clean appearance. I'm really digging it. And then, of course, the Indian, it still has the bullet style turn signals because they haven't changed a whole lot as far as that. So I think I've covered everything. The seat's much better, by the way. The stock seat is much better on the Harley this year. It's always been pretty decent on the Indian. Um, Harley has really stepped up their game as far as the stock seat, which was actually pretty surprising. Now, the Challenger comes with the front, and so does the Harley. It comes with the chopped engine guards now instead of the full engine guards that you got on the, uh, just like the Indian Challenger, what that one actually comes with. So again, more of a sport touring versus the slammed bagger look. So what about pricing for these two motorcycles? And we're going to wrap it up and I'm going to tell you which one I like the best. Well, you would think that typically things go up, especially when you add in all the safety features on the Harley, the new Skyline OS, a bigger screen, redesigned fairing, LEDs all the way around, uh, the new bigger motor, and yet the price has actually kind of gone down. Now, if you're used to buying standard versions of the Road Glide, you won't see it that way. But again, with all the safety features and everything they've thrown in, uh, a base Road Glide or Street Glide with chrome pipes, billiard gray, 26,000. Once you add a paint and black pipes, you're at 28,000. That's MSRP. Uh, let's say you add a parts package, which is, I don't know, $2,500. Now you're, you know, 30,500 out the door. Um, or not out the door, but you know what I'm saying? You're, you're at that minus your freight and surcharge or whatever. So the pricing at 28,000, let's just say for the example that I had compared to the Challenger, which was 33,749 bucks, that's a really big difference. Now, without the power band audio, the Challenger is actually right at $31,000. And while the gap between the two bikes was bigger in previous years because you got all the electronics on the Indian, you got the motorized windshield, you got the quick locking bags, the value was always better. Indians actually raised their prices, okay? So we compared just the Dark Horse Indian Challenger with some kind of paint on it, right? You know, you're at $31,000. If you add like the Sunset Red Smoke, now you're at $31,749, which is comparable to the Whiskey Fire Road Glide that we had to compare uh, this Challenger to. And so uh, you are at least $3,000 more, um, $3,500 more in some cases on the Challenger. So I guess what you would have to ask yourself, assuming that aesthetics is something you like both bikes, let's just say, uh, you would have to ask yourself, is the quick locking bags and the motorized windshield, maybe the Fox suspension, maybe the inverted suspension, is that stuff alone worth the extra cost? Because now where the Harley before you'd have to pay $1,300 extra for RDRS, you know, and you, we were basically at the same price. Uh, now the Harley is definitely a better value 
as long as you can live without those three things, including the inverted front suspension, um, the Fox rear shock. Some people may find it better or worse. Depends on who you are. I found that both these bikes ran really well, so I don't know that there's too much of a difference there. Um, but mainly quick locking bags and the motorized windshield. To me, I think Indians kind of gone the wrong way. They did this with their Challenger Elite as well. You know, that bike is 38.5, I believe. So it went up like either $25 or $3,500, somewhere in there. I'll make sure to, to kind of leave a, a, a number here so I'm accurate because I don't want to be unfair, you know, biased towards one or the other. I just want to give you the facts. Uh, Harley has gone down in pricing technically with everything that's included uh, while Indian has gone up. So value wise, Harley Davidson now is the better bargain. Which bike would I actually buy though? And which one do I like the best? Well, I bought the 24 Road Glide Whiskey Fire that you're looking at. Uh, so that pretty much answers that. And again, it was based on the value. Now, when I went out to Las Vegas and I rode these motorcycles, I had zero intentions of coming back and buying a new motorcycle. But when I found out how much better these bikes were and the prices they were coming in at, there was no way that I was not going to buy this motorcycle. Plus all the things I can do with it and all the bikes I can compare it to right here on the channel. I mean, it was just, to me, it was a no brainer. This thing is just incredible for the price you get it at. Now, I've had some people ask me in my other videos, hey, where are you finding a, a, a bike at MSRP and all that kind of stuff? All I can tell you is I go to Orlando Harley. So talk to Billy at Orlando Harley, tell him Hegshot sent you. I promise you those guys uh, will look out for you. That's where I go and I'm 400 miles away from them. Of course, you gotta go there, you gotta sign paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but either way, they are definitely worth the trip. So that's my suggestion again. Tell them I sent you. That's what I would go with. I just like the aesthetics better on the Harley. I love the way that engine rides. I love the sport modes. And it doesn't mean that the Harley hasn't had issues. That's for another video, but that's not something that I'm going to overlook. So essentially in my new bike reveal video, I'm gonna talk about one issue that I have had with Harley Davidson on this brand new motorcycle. Now, of course, anytime you get a new design, and you buy that brand new design. We're kind of ambassadors. We kind of figure this stuff out with Harley to an extent. Some people don't want to do that and I understand that. Um, but those are issues that I will talk about. I believe though, Harley is going to get this thing figured out because that's what they've always done um, in making super reliable motorcycles. Hey, and Indians had issues too. And we've seen that as well. So uh, neither one of them is totally without their cons, uh, but both of them, I think, are just really awesome motorcycles. I just personally like the Harley better. I think the pricing is better, the aesthetics are better, and I really like that new engine and the new ride modes and everything that system offers you in the Skyline OS. So that's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. Which motorcycle do you like the best and why? Let me know. And of course, if you like what I do, consider subscribing. You could also join us on Patreon or join the channel right here, gain access to some pretty cool perks. You can check out my merch line. However you want to support us, it doesn't matter. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you. See you guys in the next one. And as always, hold them down.